Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here to bring you another review coming out of the Toronto International Film Festival and I cannot wait to talk about this one. And that of course is Conclave directed by Edward Berger starring Rafe Fiennes, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, Sergio Castellito, and Isabella Rossellini. And this follows Cardinal Lawrence right after the Pope dies and kind of his search to find the new pope through this process called conclave where all the cardinals from all over the world come together and hold an election to see who will take the spot in the palpacy now this movie i was expecting quite a bit obviously going into this i loved edward berger's remake of all quiet on the western front even more so than the 1930 film so i was very excited to see what this was going to be this was being hyped up as a big oscar player and i knew i was really going to like this movie at the very least i thought okay maybe like i will love this i'm not sure but at the very least it's going to be a very good uh, very well made movie and i will say that is true but I don't think my expectations could have prepared me for how absolutely riveted I was for the entire runtime of Conclave. This movie just had me in its grasp from frame one all the way through to the ending of this film. Not only that, but I think it is one of the most perfectly directed, one of the most perfectly written, one of the most perfectly edited and one of the most perfectly shot films of the entire year. And it's really going to be t hard to top in, from a technical standpoint in that regard because literally you feel the impact of every single cut in this movie and every single scene is so purposeful and has so much setup and leads to exhilarating levels of payoff that I was certainly not expecting from this movie. Now I think a lot of this has to do with the fact too that I come from a fairly religious background. Now I can't say I'm necessarily the most pious person in the world uh, in, when it comes to how my life is today, but I certainly love movies that explore the ideas of faith and religion and the differentiation between the two of them. Like how do we hold our own personal faith in God when the institutions that we're supposed to believe in are filled with men who aren't quite what they should be, if that makes sense. And I really love that Peter Strawn's expertly crafted screenplay tackles this idea in spades. I mean, he really is hitting so many different facets when it comes to you know, one's own faith and certainty in the institutions in which we are supposed to, you know, place our belief in and really makes you question a lot of it because the thing that's so ridiculous to me is that there's literally an election to find a pope when the pope is supposed to represent humility and selflessness just like Jesus Christ and yet a lot of these people who are trying to get this position are driven by greed and power. You know, the complete opposite of that. And I think that dichotomy is just so interesting and very much worth exploring, if you ask me. And I really do think that this movie so expertly taps into that. And also, the division between the church. There's a lot of people who hold a very progressive idea of what the church should be. And a lot of people are stuck in conservatism and traditionalism. Uh, and I really think that comes ahead so beautifully because you have these people trying to instill their own beliefs into this institution. And I think that a lot of people often forget uh, one thing that is very important, I think, in government is the separation between church and state. And I often find that a lot of times people, you know, kind of associate conservatism with religion and I really am not a fan of that at all coming from my perspective but I think this movie nails it beautifully but gets to show both sides of the token and uh, how they both operate on their own terms and what that means for the future of the church what it means for the people within it I, I think this is just 
absolutely beyond thought-provoking exercise in all these ideas. But not only that, the characters are so rich and has so much going on. There's so much political maneuvering and backstabbing and like all this stuff happening. I think this is one of the greatest political thrillers of all time. And it solely takes place in the Vatican. <laughs> like, who would have thought that it would have been this good? But I was just so riveted by all these pieces being set up, knocked over, shifted around. It is just a very unpredictable thrill ride, which does so much in regards to tension with so little uh, of a setting. And speaking of the setting, I may say it is, you know, self-contained, but it's captured so beautifully here by Stéphane Fontaine, who honestly has some of the most well-crafted and breathtaking cinematography of the entire year. This is easily getting a Best Cinematography nomination at the Oscars next year. And there were a few shots that literally did quite that. Just took my breath away. I was just in awe of a lot of the bird's eye views he was using. And I really do think that this movie emphasizes just how important blocking is in films. Because literally all the character dynamics are set up within relation to how they're positioned in the frame to one another. And I really think it just makes the drama that much more effective and that much more captivating. But let's talk about the performers themselves because I honestly think this is the best ensemble cast of the entire year. And leading the way, bringing this whole cast together is Rafe Fiennes as Cardinal Lawrence here in one of his best roles in years. Obviously, I absolutely loved him in The Menu. I thought he should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor there, but Obviously, Ray Fiennes hasn't been nominated at the Oscars since The English Patient almost 30 years ago. So I really do think that this performance from Ray Fiennes is quite emotional and quite tense. There's a lot riding on Cardinal Lawrence's exploration into these, you know, greedy back dealings and you know, maneuvering, what have you. And I really do think that this is such an emotionally gripping performance. I do think he is definitely getting nominated for Best Actor this year, and it will be very well-deserved. I'm really glad to see Ray Fiennes get another, you know, great, juicy leading role, because I don't think we've seen him uh, fill that position for a long, long time. And I think he is by far the standout of this movie. And I think the only, like for sure acting prospect from this movie because I know a lot of people uh, are talking about Stanley Tucci who is really great in this and I think he plays one of my favorite characters in the movie. His character specifically I think plays the perfect dichotomy between faith and self-interest and I think he's just such a complex character and I think based on that alone he could be nominated. But there are so many standouts from this cast, it's really hard to choose. I think Sergio Castellito as Cardinal Tedesco is really, really great in this as well and gets a few really juicy moments. And I think his character specifically really provides a great opposition and, and conflict for everyone in the story. Same with John Lithgow, who's obviously been great in everything. And he gets quite a juicy role here. Maybe not as big as we would have expected, but I do think he brings it when he is on screen. Uh, absolutely an iconic actor. And Isabella Rossellini, a lot of people thought that, you know, she might have gotten her first nomination from this. Now, she's not in the movie as much, and I think that is certainly by design, considering who her character is and what she's doing. She plays one of the nuns uh, at the Vatican here, and I think she gets a couple of really great pivotal moments to really shine, but I don't think it's enough to really land her an Oscar nomination at all. But I do think she is quite effective in her role in this film, and it's a very integral one at that, I'll say that much. But to me, I think the standout of the supporting cast is newcomer Carlos Diaz, who really adds so much heart to this movie that I really didn't expect. And that's all I'll really say about that. I want you to see the rest of this movie and kind of experience it uh, for yourself. But this is just unbelievably stacked from start to finish. I also love the score from Volker Bertelman, who won the Oscar for All Quiet on the Western Front for literally a four-note motif. And that's kind of crazy that that went over Babylon, but besides the point, I think his score here is even better. It's really driven by a lot of, you know, sparse percussion and very propulsive string work. 
And as soon as, like, we were 15 minutes in this movie, I'm like, oh yeah, that's getting nominated for Best Original Score. It's just one of those things where you hear it and you automatically know that it is getting a nomination. And it would be very well deserved. It's definitely one of my favorite scores of the year so far. And uh, very, very worthy of a nomination at the very least. But there's so many things, like I said, the editing is just, this is the best edited film of the year, I think, because you can feel the precision of every cut and the importance it has on the story. And I think it really drives this movie along that, you know, could have very well been dry and absolutely lifeless, but it really keeps you glued to the screen. And I, I at least, I couldn't wait to see what they were cutting to next and the images that they were putting together in relations to the characters' dynamics in the story. It is really, really phenomenal in conjunction with the blocking, of course. And I absolutely love I think everything about this movie, and I definitely want to say there's a plot twist at the end of this movie, which was like, <laughs> I mean, obviously, for those who've read the book, the Robert Harris novel, you're going to know what it is, but I didn't know what it was, and after thinking about it further, I think it just played so much better in my mind, especially considering some of the insinuations that the very ending of this film leaves you with. I really do think that this is a movie that when you leave the theater it is going to sit with you and you're going to have to ruminate on it because I think it makes me love it even more. It doesn't really spell anything out for you. There's a lot you have to interpret even though it is a pretty straightforward drama in that regard in the way it deals with all these ideas but also the idea of your own personal faith and you know how damaging certainty can be and I also love just how this film deals with the idea of you know being open to others and not being closed off because for an institution that is supposed to be so welcoming to everyone to come into the fold of Jesus Christ there is obviously a lot of closed-mindedness to certain individuals coming into the church. And I really do believe this film tackles these prejudices that are built into a lot of the mindsets of these people so well. And it flourishes so beautifully in so many uh, absolutely riveting monologues by the whole cast, specifically Ray Fiennes here. And I can't say enough great things about Conclave. This is going to be a huge Oscar player, and I certainly think that this is probably a front runner to win Best Adapted Screenplay, if you ask me. I, I really think that this is the best screenplay of the entire year. I absolutely love the precision of the craft. And it's literally everything I love about cinema and why I go to the movies. And on that note, I am going to give Conclave a 10 out of 10. I really did not expect this at all, but I think this movie is an absolute masterpiece. And I think everyone should see it. This is really like this year's spotlight. And I'm not saying that just because of the Catholic Church being involved. But it really is one of those movies that captures all the moral quandaries that I like to ponder when I go to watch a great film and think about the art of cinema and what it can offer and what it can feed us intellectually. I really love being entertained and moved by a film like this and I think Conclave does that for me with flying colors. It's To me it's one of the greatest movies I've ever seen and uh, I'm not saying you all will feel that way but I really do hope that you get a chance to see it and uh, that it will play as well for you. Now to talk about the Oscars real quick, of course if you saw my out of the theater reaction with Brother Bro, we were kind of talking about this movie getting a lot of Oscar nominations, which it obviously is going to get picture, uh, screenplay, actor, um, definitely I think cinematography, editing, I think the costumes are amazing as well in this, very, very well crafted. And there's a couple of others. I really do think that Edward Berger deserves a Best Director nomination, so I'm really having my fingers crossed for him because I'd love to see it happen. Because as I said, this is one of the best directed movies of the year, probably after Dune Part 2 for me, so that's really saying a lot right there. And uh, yeah, hoping that the award season bodes well for this film. But uh, let me know if you've seen Conclave already at any of the festivals and what did you think of it. Please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more reviews like this. There's still a lot more coming out of TIFF that you will be seeing very soon. Uh, specifically, the next one I want to get to is I'm Still Here, directed by Walter Sales. And please stay on the lookout for that. I will talk to you guys very soon.